Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. In this edition, we focus on President Jair Bolsonaro, the leader the world, it seems, loves to dislike. We've been examining his first year in power in Brazil. Leader of Brazil's far right, Bolsonaro was swept to power as the antithesis of his predecessor, Dilma Rousseff, and her mentor, Lula da Silva. Brazil is now in the headlines for the wildfires that are out of control, threatening the Amazon rainforest, a disaster Bolsonaro is accused of showing indifference towards. And in France, he made headlines, of course, for his offensive remarks about the First Lady, Brigitte Macron. Our reporter is Pierre Ledouf. He joins us now from Rio. Pierre, Bolsonaro, among other things, also pledged to clamp down on corruption. How's he doing? Well, there is already suspicion of corruption hanging over one of Jair Bolsonaro's sons, but also over the Social Liberal Party, thanks to which he was elected. Since then, he has left the party to create his own one, the Alliance for Brazil, but there was little change in the way of doing politics. Without no majority in parliament, the government must negotiate the support of deputies when attempting to push with reforms. The real break is more on the ideological level. Pierre Ledoux, thank you very much indeed. Pierre, Laura Damas and Fanny Lothair with this report. Rio's military compound is in the city's northern district. Today is the anniversary of the Infantry Parachute Regiment, the army unit to which Jair Bolsonaro belonged. We paratroopers, by popular democratic will, climbed the steps of the presidential palace. One year after his election, his public appearances still have the atmosphere of a campaign rally. Here, he's surrounded by his most devoted followers. Here he is, it's him. Damn it, I don't believe it. Some waited for hours in the blazing sun just to see him. He's meeting people's expectations. He's talking about our reality, and that's what we want. He restored confidence, pride, here in our blood, in our veins. But since his election, the international community has been worried. In late August, fires ravaged the Amazon forest. But Bolsonaro wants to exploit its resources. Faced with criticism, the president largely boycotted media interviews, preferring to speak directly on social media. Rotten journalism from TV Globo. Rotten. Unscrupulous rascals, you only disclose what's going wrong. And therefore, when he does hold the rare press conference, the media swarm it. You've been criticised a lot by the international press. You lost a lot of allies. What's your assessment of this first year in office? First, Brazil changed its president. There's no longer a government subject to the interests of certain European countries. I don't worry about losing allies. What I don't want to lose is Brazil. Propelled to the top of polls after former President Lula was convicted for corruption, Bolsonaro was unpleasantly surprised to see his main political opponent released from prison on November the 8th. When Lula left jail, the anti-corruption group Vem Pra Rua organized rallies across the country like this one in Rio's Copacabana district. Adriana Baltazar is the movement's local leader. The gang of rotten people from the Supreme Court, they are the nation's greatest enemies today. Their anger is aimed at Supreme Court judges who allowed Lula to be freed. The protesters say the release proves the justice system is plagued by corruption. Lula's condemnation turned the page. His release is a step backwards. But the demonstrators don't say a word about the president's son, Senator Flavio Bolsonaro, who's under investigation for money laundering. 
Let him be tried. I told you we don't defend people but ideas. A huge banner displays a demand by the most extreme demonstrators, a call for the return to the authoritarian order of Brazil's military regime. I want AI-5. Institutional Act No. 5 was an autocratic decree that in 1968 plunged Brazil into the darkest years of its dictatorship. On the other side of Rio, these students hang a banner in front of their university to denounce the gravity of returning to that period. We see it there, it's good. A cabinet minister and one of the president's sons said recently that a new measure similar to that decree could be adopted today if necessary. Institutional Act No. 5 paved the way for torture and political persecutions. People need to understand that the moment is critical. Brazilians are passive and that's what this government wants, that people don't realise. Many things make us think of a return to this period in our country, because they were democratically elected and they openly refer to this period. Lucas and his colleagues took to the streets several times this year, like at this demonstration in June. Universities have been hit with budget cuts and become hotbeds of resistance to Jair Bolsonaro's policies. On this evening, students protest against austerity and security policy. In Rio, that security policy is embodied by far-right governor Wilson Witzel. A former Bolsonaro ally, Witzel has now become an opponent accused of coveting Bolsonaro's office. When Witzel took office, he gave police greater leeway in the favelas. The operation is starting today. The mess is over. We will restore order. Since the start of the year, more than 1,546 people have been shot dead by police. It's a record number that includes many innocent victims, like Vanessa's daughter, who was killed in September at the age of eight. The girl's mother and grandfather are meeting with their lawyer today. We're lost, upset. We carry for the rest of our lives, in our memory and in our hearts, the loss of an angel. Vanessa was sitting with her daughter at the back of a small bus when a police officer shot in their direction at a passing motorcycle. They tell themselves that they can shoot as soon as they see a trafficker or someone who carries a weapon without thinking of the consequences, because there will be no consequences. They just learnt that the policeman will be tried, but the blunder he made is very rarely punished. And Bolsonaro hopes to widen protections for police in these circumstances so they can claim self-defence and escape prosecution. There is an ideological alignment between the federal government, the governor of the state of Rio and the city hall of Rio. We can speak of necropolitics. We enter into this logic of killing traffickers and anyone in their path. When we do not guarantee human rights or the presumption of innocence, anyone can die, even an eight-year-old child. Under the hardline security era of Jair Bolsonaro, the Bar Association decided to triple its staff devoted to human rights. In Brasilia, the political opposition to Bolsonaro includes less than a quarter of all lawmakers. They tried to block government initiatives throughout the year. Right before the Christmas break, they launched a new offensive. Well, on that day, 25 left-wing lawmakers created a parliamentary group devoted to human rights. Democracy is today under threat from an absolutely retrograde, violent, devastating government in the field of social rights. Heading up the new group, Congressman Marcelo Freixo works with support from 25 civil society organisations. The army doesn't need to send tanks into the streets for democracy to be threatened. There are the deaths of young black people in the favelas, of the indigenous people. Brazil is the country that kills the most human rights defenders in the world.
We have a government that promotes and supports police violence. Congratulations, count on us. Today, the opposition believes the far-right government is trying to undo all of the social gains its own lawmakers achieved in the past. The latest battle was over a highly criticised pension reform. So far, the Bolsonaro government's austerity policies have failed to revive growth or lower unemployment. In this Congressional Finance Committee, lawmaker and former accountant Ale Silva represents the government. She's new to politics and religiously defends Bolsonaro's budget cuts. Generating income and jobs in Brazil is what matters to us. Though Silva is faithful to the president, who was elected on an anti-corruption platform, she also uncovered embezzlement of campaign funds within his former party. Even if you take the necessary measures, corruption is impossible to eradicate. I have a very good relationship with the president. I think it would be a shame to abandon everything because of one person. Unconditional in her support, Silva also takes a front row seat in evangelical Christian worship next door to her office. Though Brazil's constitution says it is secular, worship occurs each Wednesday morning in a room where parliamentary committees normally meet. Christian evangelicals are Bolsonaro's main electoral base. Today, the service is led by the lawmaker and pastor, Eurico. There are people who criticize us, who speak badly of us, but we are here under the protection of God. The Evangelical Caucus in Parliament now has over 100 lawmakers, and the moral standards of the religious right are more and more common in Brazilian culture. We realize that some people use art not to defend art itself, but values that we consider immoral. Some may be shocked by a scene of tenderness between two people of the same sex. Backed by evangelical groups, the president and his government announced they want to wage a culture war. Brazil's artistic community has denounced their actions as indirect censorship. The internationally recognized company of Artur and André often addresses minority issues. We still have to adjust a little to be in sync. To be booked by state-funded theatres and events, their shows must pass through an approval process linked directly to the presidency. Any show that has a sensitive theme, such as transphobia or LGBT themes, will never be chosen. One of their shows from 2016 features a transsexual. In September, for the first time, it was cancelled. André has been an actor since the end of Brazil's military dictatorship. The difference is that now the censors are no longer in the room. They are hidden and do not say that they censor. They use false arguments. We decided to remove this show. There was a better one. Lies. Really, they are censoring. The government abolished Brazil's Ministry of Culture and replaced it with a secretary-level position, which for many symbolised its ideological crusade. An evangelical now holds the position. Arthur and André, who founded their company in France, chose to stay in Brazil. They say staying is an act of resistance. A report from uh, Pierre, who is still with us in Rio. Pierre, thanks for that report. Now, let's talk more about the situation then. Uh, South America in the grip of various movements of social change. I'm thinking of the images we've seen from places such as uh, Colombia, Chile, Ecuador. Uh, we haven't seen those kind of protests in the streets in Brazil. Um, is this to the credit of Jair Bolsonaro? Here, there has not been a big protest movement like in Ecuador or in Chile. 
This can be explained by the fact that Brazilians are quite indifferent when it comes to politics. It is not common to witness uh, big demonstrations here. When we met Jair Bolsonaro last month, we asked him if this protest movement could spread to Brazil. Here is answer. We remain standing ready so as not to be taken by surprise. Up to now, we see no reason that this movement would spread here. Brazil has never had such a democratic reality as it does now. The uh, Brazilian president, Jair Bolsonaro. Let's go back to Pierre for more. Pierre, um, we heard that from the, the president. I'm wondering what public opinion is saying about Jair Bolsonaro right now. Well, at the time of his election, Brazilians were very divided about him. Well, today they are even more so. Uh, after one year in power, uh, his support base remained stable. One third of the electorate still support him no matter what. On the other hand, more and more people completely disapprove of his policy. With his outrageous statements, it seems that's what he's looking for, to further divide how Brazilians feel about him. Politics has become an issue they don't want to raise with strangers for fear of provoking violent reactions from his most fervent supporters or detractors. Pierre Lodouf, thank you very much indeed. You can see, of course, our report by Pierre, Laura Damas and Fanny Lothair, again via our website, www.france24.com. This is Reporters of France 24. Stay with us.